Hey, happy Monday to you! Wow, another week. Here we go. Tell you what, man. Every single time, I think I've seen it all, okay? In regard to, you know, like our nation and stuff like that and things that are happening. Something new comes along and, well, um... I gotta tell you, man, um, I, I can't understand what's happening in our country right now. Um, you know, I, I try to stay out of the whole political realm, you know, because it's pretty volatile for one thing. And uh, generally, nobody anymore... If you're, you know, on opposing sides of the red and blue thing, can have a civil conversation without, you know, blowing up into a bunch of stuff. And equally, um, in regard to, you know, the whole riot thing and all that's going on there, you know, um, volatile, okay? But... I got to tell you something, man, you know, with all the stuff that's going on with this, you know, George Floyd fella and the whole police interaction, you know, that was, you know, horrible, completely uncalled for. I think everybody can agree on that, you know, but I'm going to tell you something, man. And strange as it is, especially for, you know, me, I have friends that are cops. All right. And uh, I know that, you know, in my past life, that was not the case, all right, for good reason. But now, I do. And uh, I know other people that are also, you know, in the law enforcement field. And they're really good, godly, decent people, all right. And as with any group of people, there's always some bad actors in there, all right, that you know, create all kinds of problems and they're bad, okay? But the majority, by and large, are good, honest, hardworking, upright, godly people. And this morning as I was, you know, thumbing through the channels, I came across this uh, report that a few cities you know, back east, but pertaining to us here in Los Angeles, um, there's a push to defund the police department. And in some places, to completely eliminate the police department. And look, I'm going to tell you something right now. That is by far the stupidest thing I have ever heard and I've heard some pretty stupid stuff in the course of the last couple of months and even over the course of the last you know few years but primarily in the last few months the the ignorance of people that lead our nation in all the areas you know from everywhere to the top down okay but more so in the more local regions like uh they're having to, you know, make decisions on whether it's COVID-19 or riots and appeasing one group and appeasing another group, whatever the case is. And, and the decisions they make, like, like off the cuff, you know, and then you, you sit back and you're like, who the heck is making these decisions? And are they even talking to anybody about them? They're clearly not talking to God about them. That much I can assure you of. But we're in this place of lawlessness right now, okay? And and what that means is just like what it says, that people are running amok, just going crazy, man. And uh, it's creating all kinds of tension and all kinds of other things, you know, and, and um, laws are being changed to where, you know, criminals, and I, I mean criminals, not like, you know, someone 
that's really stupid and they go out and kick a window in and steal a TV set or something, you know, which is also lawlessness. But, I mean, you know, the, the ridiculous mob mentality and the, and the stupidity of some people to get, you know, wrapped up in that. It's not what I mean. What I'm talking about is uh, people that are in a position now because law enforcement has been so constricted that there there's no concern about consequences. Amen? Well, that's already happening right now. And if, and it's bad, all right? People are getting hurt, people are getting killed. Um, crime is, you know, running rampant in places. Well, I don't know who thought it was a good idea. Maybe it's to stop all the madness, I don't know. But to take away the very agencies that protect us against criminals or protect us from having to protect ourselves, okay, which... A lot of people are perfectly capable of handling that little nugget right there, amen? Um, but it would be to an extreme, okay? The law enforcement would be the ones that arrest, try, convict, you know, due process, and lock them up to remove the criminal element, if you will, okay? When people... Citizens start taking on that role, then you have no due process, all right? And what you end up with is like the old West, where people start making up their own laws, all right? And they start making up their own penalties, okay? And then you have complete lawlessness, completely, amen. And it's really ironic because tomorrow I'm going to be talking about this cat named Micah who pretty much ran his own program too because that's what's happened in those days. But today, the devotional is going to be in 2 Thessalonians. We're going to talk about this stuff for just a minute. So go ahead and grab your Bible. Let's open up a word of prayer because we need it. Our nation needs prayer amen father we lift up this study to you right now lord we lift up our nation to you right now lord what looks like a degradation of our entire system crumbling right now lord we ask your hand be upon it father we ask that your holy spirit move through our country right now lord and bring stability and peace back to our troubled country father we love you we praise you we invite you to be with us for this study in jesus name amen amen okay grab your bible open up to second thessalonians we're gonna take a look all right boy now second thessalonians 2 we'll start right here in verse 1 we're gonna cruise on over to about 12 today okay now brethren concerning the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together to him we ask you let me hold on for a second there there's there's folks out there right now that are going okay this is the end of the world this is where the end you know the rapture now the fact is nobody knows when the rapture is going to be it could be now i mean we could be raptured right this second before i finish with this video could be another hundred years, thousand years, whatever. That's that's God's domain, not ours. But you know, you look for signs, and you look for prophecies and things like that. And I can assure you that this is not tribulation. Things have to happen according to the Word of God, and you can't just pick and choose. All right, for that to happen, but. I can I can say from my knowledge of the word that that we certainly are living we are living in the last days. Now how long the last days last? I don't know. 
all right? But I know that we're living in all, we're, we're experiencing all the stuff, all right, from religious falsehood um, to people believing in their own power, you know, um, from churches that are sold out for big money, the big show, uh, pastors clearly elevating or allowing themselves through their congregation or whatever to be elevated into very high positions that they ought not be. Amen. There's only one God. And sometimes I think, uh, sometimes people think that they're a little bit longer, thicker zip tie than they really are, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, concerning all this stuff, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Even here, and all hell was breaking loose throughout the Holy Land and persecution was going on. They're going, hey, don't, don't let anybody fool you into saying that this is it. All right, this is, this is, we're in the tribulation. You know, we're in the, the last time Jesus coming back with, you know, his army. And, you know, and that's not what we said. And that's not what's happening. And today, that's not what they said. And that's not what happened. What we're experiencing is a period of lawlessness, which is part of the last days. All right. But I just want you to understand, as bad as things are right now, it's going to get way worse, okay? It, it can get way worse, and it will get way worse, but we can pray through, too. We can fix stuff if we fix stuff, amen? Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the fallen away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So, just so you know, when we're talking about um, the, uh, the day coming unless the fallen away is revealed, um, we're gonna, the Holy Spirit right now, in our in our time frame, the Holy Spirit is holding this. All right, God's God's in control of the whole thing. Jesus is King, and the Holy Spirit is among the world, dwells within us, and there will come a point where God says, "Okay, now it's time for that to stop." And when the Holy Spirit is removed, and the world is left to its own vices. The son of perdition, when you start seeing the Antichrist, you start seeing people revealed for who they really are. And there won't be any backing away from it at that point. Because once the revelation happens, and I don't mean revelation is in the book, but once these, these things are revealed, the power, the power grab will already have been established. Okay, And not only that, there'll be people... And I, and I do mean like believers, you know, or religious people, probably a better term, that will follow the man and not God. Mm -hmm. Look what it says here. Uh, revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is a God. And not only that, but he's going to believe it himself. I don't think, I don't know that he'll believe that he's God, but an equal with God. You remember the Bible, the Bible talks about that Jesus didn't consider himself equal to God. Now, there's a reason for this. Equalness, all right, even though we know that Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and God's the Father, there's still God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all right? There's a reason for that. We serve a God of order, amen? Well, these guys will have all kinds of mm, piety 
and religious words and this kind of quasi wisdom about them and people will follow you know why i know that because people follow the ignorant stupid crazy stuff that's on the news or on facebook or on twitter or on instagram and they they bite that hook and they swallow it whole no research no looking into it no nothing and then they pass it along and little things get added to it here and there and then before long you have this mass of people believe in the lie mm -hmm. and and it's all in the word of god just so you know everything you're watching right now all the misinformation all the unreasonable dialogue where you try to reason with somebody and they're so certain of the bs that you can't reason with them and when when you question why why are you doing this? They don't know why. They only know that the rest of the cattle are doing it and they're pissed off. Like, why are you pissed off? Because. Well, because is not an answer. Because is a word. But they don't know. They're just been out of shape, right? So this guy, and there's always one or two of them, High places, powerful money, um, uh, a visual of what you might be if you just play ball, right? But just so you know, you never get to play ball. You're always in the dugout, always. The coach will never put you in. And if he does, he's only putting you in as cannon fodder so that you can be fired into the enemy's face and die anyway uh, this guy showed himself be god do you not remember that when i was still with you i told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time when the holy spirit is no longer restraining this which they don't even know they're being restrained. They think they're so powerful and so smart and so clever. They're still under the control of God. When God allows them, when he pulls off and says, okay, there's your guy right there. You know, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. You remember that? And the big, you know, powerful wizard and all that stuff. And then he was revealed to be behind the curtain and he was pulling all the switches and stuff. Like the same gig right there, man. Kind of weird how life imitates art sometimes and that's what's going to happen all of a sudden the re the revealing is going to happen I'm like wow you know i thought you were like some big you know really important intelligent you know leader dude and it turns out you're just some whack job man sitting behind a desk somewhere pushing all the buttons and ordering all the stuff but it'll be too late because by then the destruction and the loss of life and property and liberties and freedoms and all that stuff will already be wiped out and pretty much chaos and anarchy will be the order of the day then. Anyway, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. There's coming a day here, man. There's going to come a point. Sometimes God will just allow things to go on and go on and go on. And, you know, there, there's opportunity there, if you will. There's opportunity to pull back, pray through. Calm down, find some peace, find some joy, but unfortunately, the majority doesn't want to get involved. They want to sit back and stay in their in the safety of their 
their little world. And then the, the small group that really creates all the ruckus and chaos, they start gaining momentum and gaining momentum. And it's kind of like a, a vacuum and it kind of sucks other people in that aren't real bright, okay? And rather than think for themselves or work for themselves to create a life, they'll catch the wave of all the the chaos and madness that's going on there and receive their their little temporary rewards, all right? But remember this, they're temporary. They don't last. They're not fulfilling, they're not satisfying, they're not eternal. They're not they don't even last very long and then they're gone. And what happens is the roads and bridges behind you are burned. So when you've reached the point of realizing there's nothing there, it's all fake, it was all fraudulent, and you're now in a position yourself of just trying to survive. When you look back behind you, you realize that you and all the other crazy cattle have destroyed everything behind you. And now you're at the mercy of this tyrannical freak that you've now realized is, in fact, a tyrannical freak. Mm -hmm. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightest brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. That's what people are being fooled by. They think there's this new beginning, this new normal, this new something or other. That's the trick of the enemy right there, to convince people that what was, was bad, all right? That civil obedience, working a job, earning your way, not expecting free stuff handed to you, not expecting that you go out and break into someone's house, you're going to go to jail for burglary, okay? When, the, when Satan can get all the right people moving, all the right other people around to believe that, hey, you don't have to fall for all this stuff. You don't have to obey that you don't and, and they'll go to the point that you don't have to obey man's laws well who do you think setting up the new laws hello right okay but they're kind of clever and devious and this group of people are stupid all right they're stupid they they would rather follow this nonsense than to step back and go hey you know what that's not cool that's not right, all right? Burning cities down is not the answer. Expecting free stuff forever from a government is not the answer. Well, they said they would give us food and clothes. They will, all right? According to their little register of how much food they think you should eat, how much clothing they think you should have, what kind of car, where you should work, what you should think. Come on, wake up, all right? That has never worked anywhere in the world except for the people that want to get all the money and piled up in there. But you know what? Those people always end up at the end of a rope or something hideous and horrible like that when the masses finally pull their head out of their pocket and realize they've been duped. Goodness. Come on. You people are smarter than that, okay? Mm. It makes my neck stiff when I think about how st oh, okay. Breathe in, breathe out. Praise the Lord. Okay. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They chose to follow this Nimrod and not Jesus Christ. Amen. And all of a sudden, stuff that they know, they've heard about, they've heard mom talk about, they've heard Christians talk about, whatever. 
All of a sudden, it's all coming to pass. All hell's breaking loose. Everything's being run by the evil one. Amen? And guess what? They chose to turn their back on Christ, and now they're paying for it. And they think, this is horrible. This is so bad, all this stuff that's going on. No. Let me share something with you. That is bad. All right, I'll give you that. But what's coming is worse beyond your wildest imagination when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit removes his loving, righteous hand and you are left to the vices of yourself and all the other lunatics out there, then you're going to see. And even then, that's not even the worst. Amen? That's going to be horror on a scale beyond your comprehension. But eternal condemnation, that's the worst. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any worse, rather, than hell. All right? And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So all these people that are running around here, acting like fools and doing all this stuff, all right? Listen, you want to try to tempt God? You want to pick a fight with God? You want to say, you know what? I'm not going to believe in you and your righteousness. I'm going to, I'm going to go out and rape and pillage and plunder and do whatever I want to do that makes me happy. And God's going to be like, hey, check this out. Whoosh. And they're going to believe the lie, man. And a lot of them are believing the lie right now. They're out there doing all kinds of stupid stuff. And if you just stop, take two steps back and go, is this really a good idea, man, you know, to kick people's doors down and beat them up and steal their stuff and stuff like that? Because, I mean, what if you just stopped and said, hey, I wonder how I would feel. Oops, sorry about that. I wonder how I would feel if someone kicked my door down. And beat me to a pulp and took all my stuff. Would that make you happy? Would you be like, woo, this is awesome. You know, let's open a fresca and party. No, it would suck, all right, if it happened to you. Because these people, if you say something wrong in the wrong way or something to them and they don't like the, oh my God, we're going to tear the world down right now. The unbalance that you see here, that's lawlessness, amen? And you know what? If that's what they want, God will let them have it, all right? Know this, it's for this long, all right? It's very temporary. All the pleasures that they're chasing after, their love for unrighteousness and all this stuff, they think, they think, they're really on to something right now. But you know what's going to happen one day? It's all going to stop. Amen? There's going to be a rapture of the children of God. And this world is going to be left to some horrible, demonic, listen, you don't want to be there for that. Amen? Amen? If you're even considering jumping in on any of this nonsense that's going on right now, just if you've never listened to anything I've ever said to you, listen, stop, amen? Stop and get the heck out of that madness, amen? Get your butt back in your word, amen? Get yourself back into prayer. Talk to God, man. You need to get yourself hooked back up with the Lord right now because you know what? We're not even done with all this madness, and the last thing you want to be is caught out there with what you think is your buddy. He's not your buddy. He hates you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to torment you, and he wants to do it all in the face of God because that's who he's really trying to attack. Amen? And you're just going to get used like a little pawn in the midst of all this lawlessness. Be careful who you're listening to right now. I'm telling you, come to the Lord. Find peace and joy and happiness and fulfillment with your life. 
they're going to tell you, go out and destroy, tear down, and wreck. Now, who do you really want to listen to here? All right. I'm not trying to pull anybody into something. I'm trying to tell you right now is this. If it's not about peace, love, and joy, it's not from God. It's from the enemy. Amen. And if you're following, you're going down that path right there, know this. You're not loved. You're not respected. And you are about to get your butt kicked bad. Amen. Keep that in mind. This is all about happy, peace, love, and joy today, man. This whole thing was a happy devotional. Amen. To those that have eyes to hear and no, ears to hear and eyes to see. That's what it is. Amen. If you've already been blinded by all this madness around there, I'm going to pray for you and hope that you hear the pop. Amen. Because bad things are coming because I see a bad moon rising. I see trouble on the way. Amen. Burning trees of lightning. Yeah. Bad times ahead. Come on, man. Come on, woman. If, you're, if your brain is twisted right now and you're thinking about all this stupid stuff and in agreement with it, you're already halfway pulled into their trap. Amen? This is how you get out of the trap right here. See, this is the Holy Bible right there. Get into your word. Praise the Lord. I'll be back tomorrow. Talk about another guy that pff, out running amok. Amen? Till then... You and all those around you, pray hard. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus.